Okay, so what I mean by play normal League of Legends is you want to make the game as fluid as possible. You don't want to make the game confusing. It, there's no need for it to be confusing. Um, if that means full clear four times, don't interact with any lanes, so be it. That's a normal game. And that's okay to, to play like that. Um, you don't want to feel forced to gank lanes permanently. You don't want to feel forced to permanently do objectives. Sometimes these are just bad plays. And sometimes it's good to just farm. So, go into every game, mute all. You want to be making the decisions. Okay, so now let's get down to the actual steps, the actual fundamentals on how to um, think about jungle. So we talked about this the other the other session, but you want to start with a question. So let's um, think about, you know, jungling, right? A question that you always can ask yourself is, where do I want to gank, right? Or where do I want to help, right? That's a really easy question to push you forward at all times. So it will start off like this. Where do I want to gank, right? And that lets you know what information to get. So if I want to gank bot lane, for example, I'll look at the bot wave. If I want to gank bot lane, I'll look at the mid wave, see if mid has pile. If I want to gank bot lane, you know, maybe some people, if they, if they could go even further, they'll look at the top wave. So this is you gathering information, right? This is you gathering information after you've asked a question. So you've gathered this information and what does it mean? So let's say bot wave is stuck on your side. So their, their bot lane is all the way pushed up here. Your bot lane is back here. And you are down here, right? And you're gathering this info and you see that the bot wave is in a really good position for you to gank. Now you process that what this means is, hey, I'm going to be able to gank this lane very, very soon. And you'll make the decision as to whether this gank is good or bad. So the last thing you do is you think about it. Think, is this a good plan? Slash, is this a good decision? Right? So if we go even further back in time, and I'll bring up a VOD just for this. We have a, uh, let me find the Udyr game. We have an Udyr game we looked at yesterday. If I could find it. Oh, it's not this one. Bear with me, guys. Sorry. Um, okay, I can't find it. We'll use another game. This 61 defeat. So after I full clear, or I got invaded, right? I'm going through top lane and I'm asking myself, let's say, what, let's say I ask myself the same question. Where do I want to gank? Where do I want to play to? Right? I look at every single wave. I'm looking at top wave. I want to be looking at mid wave. I want to be looking at bot wave. But pretty much what I'm trying to say is you want to be doing this when you're walking out of base, when you're recalling, at any point you have downtime, even while you're doing your camp. So an example of what you could think about is let's say your bot lane crashed a wave, right? And you're walking from base and you see that the bot lane has crashed, you'll know that in a minute, the wave will end up over here, right? And in a minute, you'll be done with your gromp, your wolves, and you'll be able to gank bot. So then we can go to our process, ask a question, gather intel, pro process intel, this is a good gank. So where do I want to gank? I get, uh, I want to gank bot, right? And then I, I gather the intel, bot wave will be good in one minute, right? Then I ask myself, is this going to be a good plan or not? And I can say, yes, bot wave will look, look, what well, wave will be on our side. So we can pressure for flashes slash a kill, right? So this process, whether it's about ganking, whether it's about your item spike, whether it's about your path, whatever it is, I mean, you can ask yourself, what's next? It can be that simple. It gives you information to gather because there are so many variables in this game. I don't expect any of you to know what's the best play, what's the best question to ask at any point of the game, it's even hard for challenger players. It's not that simple to just know what's next. You ask the question, you decide it in your own head on a, in a competitive world for me, I decided with my team. Do I wanna play at a top lane? Do I wanna play bot lane? Is my mid laner like bad conditions? We talk to each other. That's how you go forward in competitive. Cool, does anyone have any questions about this? simple kind of narrow down jungling process you can go through awesome um so this will just give you a easy way to actively think about the game at all points so this is not just early game right this is this could be late game well um so what i like to give people as a question in the late game because people are like what do i do it's jungle what do i do in the late game Ask yourself, who is strong on my team? Who do I want to play with? 
who can I make every play with? So these are like the two, just two questions, two same questions. But pretty much, this tells you to look at tab, look at items, look at uh, at who is stronger slash weaker. This tells you to uh, make a play, make every single play with 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 your winning winning lane slash teammate. If there is none, keep farming, right? So mid game, this applies as well, right? And let's say you ask yourself, who is strong on my team? And it's your top laner. And your top laner is not grouping. That means you stay away from your team and you go fight with this guy who is not grouping, right? This guy wants to split push all game. He's the strongest person on your team. The rest of your team is inting. So you ask yourself, who's strong? It's not anyone else on my team. It's not my mid. It's not my ADC. It's not my support. So I go fight with my top laner. This will make, at any point of the game, if, especially when the game feels hard, asking yourself questions will make things feel a lot simpler because it's things you can focus on. Instead of getting frustrated at your teammates, instead of getting frustrated at yourself, you keep moving forward and figuring out what's next, what's next, what's next. Okay, so there are a bunch of concepts that we talked about again in the other class. And today, I'm not going to recap them. Uh, I will mention them in, in what we're talking about, but I'm not going to recap them all. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be talking about um, pathing, ganking, jungle tracking, and what it means to play for an objective as a jungler, and what does mid-game look like. So before I get into all this, does anyone have any questions about jungling in general, um, something we just talked about, anything that's on your mind? that can be answered pretty, pretty quickly, let me know, because we're going to be talking for a while. I have one question. Go for it. So when you say talking with your team, is it like communicating by pings? Um, so what I was talking about was I was talking about comp uh, competitive like gameplay. But yes, in okay. solo queue, all you can do is ping. Um, you don't want to necessarily, like, I personally don't like typing, but sometimes it's good to type. I have chat off, um, but yeah, ping your teammates. Let's say you know the jungler's in the top side, and he's going to gank top. Spam ping this guy. Spam ping him. Danger, danger, danger. Danger. Now, anything else? Um, and if, the, if your top laner is Hobrick and it's Alawi, so that's like a very specific case. I've actually had a game like this. I had Dirty Mobs. He's an Alawi one trick. He's really, really good at Alawi. What you want to do is just don't fight on the other side of the map. Let's say your top, your, your top winner is blue side, right? He's doing this shit, right? And your whole team is like, la 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 la, let's fight in the bot lane. But there's no one mid, for example. You catch the mid wave, you eat all your camps, you eat all your camps. You don't take this fight. In fact, you should danger ping these guys to fuck off. Because they're not going to win this fight. When the when the, the tap screen looks like, um, I mean, I'm going to fucking make one up. But like 5 to 0 in top lane, right? Jungle's even. And mid is like 0 to 5, and, and bot lane is like 0 to 10, right? You're not going to win this fight in the bot side. When your bot, when your bot lane is not doing good, you're not doing too good. The only person who's doing good is our top lane. If you don't want to help him, which is fine, then you should farm and try to keep these guys out of danger. Hope that answers your question. Okay, so... We're going to get into in-depth pathing here. And... What this means is we have a lot of options going into every single game, right? Every single game, things look different. So the basic of pathing, what we talked about the other day, was you look at your lanes. Am I gonna ever hold tab right there? You're going to look at your lanes, hold tab, right? And see which lane you want to path to. Right, and you decide this by many different things. There's so many things that goes on. I have a Kartus top, for example, a very weird thing. I have a Kiana mid with Ignite against a Jace. Right, it's very, very weird. Every game, every game could be different, especially in lower elos, things can look chaotic. The most important things to think about when deciding where to path, there's two simple things. One, who has priority? So in this game, Ash and Nautilus, right, they are not going to get complete priority, but they should have fighting advantage for the most part, in my opinion, right? Top lane will have priority, so it's also okay to path to top lane. 
Mid lane will not have priority. So if we look at the map, the map should look like this. Karta should be there, Connor should be there, and ball lane should be, it could be like even, right? Uh, and that's also okay to path to an even lane, okay? Pathing's priority is the first step, right? Prio. Number two is path to a lane that is going to be able to carry you um, in the mid, mid to late game. That's going to be able to help you uh, win fights, team fights. Um, and along with those thoughts, if there is no one that can carry you mid to late game, what you want to think about is where can I get an advantage early game, right? So it's carry and then who can I play with to get an advantage? So we talked about Karthus having prio and bot lane maybe being even, right? But if I path top, I get nothing, right? Because I'm not going to kill a poppy realistically. This guy's not going to die. If I path bot and Nautilus lands a hook, it's very likely we can kill someone in the bot lane. Just to confirm whether I'm right about my priorities, what I like to do is I like to go to like, um, I like to go to like 2.30 or 3 minutes and look at the lanes. So like I said, Karthus is shoved, Kiana shoved in. Now I was wrong and the Ash and Nautilus are losing prior, right? That's why I'm in a position where I'm about to get invaded, right? And their bot lane can move in and help this Ivan invade me. I'm in a really, really shitty position. I would not be in this position if I pathed up because if Poppy for some reason moves with the wave looking like that, he'll lose a full wave and that's worth one camp. That's worth two camps, in fact, if he loses two waves, right? We talked about one camp being one wave. So I pathed to my lane with no prio. I fucked up. I thought Ash and Alice could get prio. They couldn't. Look, this guy's in my fucking jungle. I think, they're, I think their ADC is like up here too. I'm going to get fucked here. And I did. Okay, so I pat the wrong way and I got punished for it. It's okay, people pat the wrong way. It's life, right? One thing you need to be aware of if you pat the wrong way is you cannot die. Don't kill yourself. Killing yourself is the worst thing to do. Recalling on low conditions is much better than just dying. Okay, so for example, for me, I was really low. Um, I, okay, well, we gotta leave this. I was really low and I was the, unable to... Like, I didn't get my red buff. I didn't really do much on the map here. I was able to maybe get my Krugs, and that's fine. I instantly recalled after, though. So, um, pretty much don't kill yourself if you're passing the wrong way. It's okay. People make mistakes. Don't make the mistake worse, okay? Let's talk about actual paths, right? So, nowadays, there are so many things you can do to get level 3, right? A lot of people don't know this, but there are so many different things you can do to get level 3. So, for example, you can do blue... Wolves, and then red buff, and you'll hit level 3, right? For example, blue, wolves, raptors does not give you level 3. These two, these three camps did not give you level 3. You need to get another camp, right? For example, wolves, raptors, and krugs, that gives you level 3. Red, raptors, and gromp, that gives you level 3. Again, red, raptors, and wolves will not give you level 3, but red, Raptors and blue does give you level three, right? So there's a many different variations of paths you can take. And just to um, confirm, I'll, I'm I'm 99% sure this does give you level three. Um, but I will double check all this in a bit with you guys. The point is, none of these paths should be concerning for you guys. You guys should never ever ever have to path like this. Keep your pathing simple. This game. I told myself I wanted to path bot lane, right? What did I do? I path bot lane and I did one, two, three. Simple. Simple as that. Don't overcomplicate the game, guys. It's not worth it. It's not worth your mental space. There's so many more things to think about. If you're asking yourself active questions and you're actively gathering information, it's very hard to focus on, you know, what camp should I clear here? What camp should I do? It doesn't matter. Clear your fucking quadrants and be okay with that. Move on after you clear this quadrant. Okay, the actual thing to think about is what do you do after you clear one quadrant? This gives you level three at all points, unless you unless you clearing this side, and you miss like if you miss like mini krugs and like a small raptor, you won't get level three. But generally speaking, you clear one quadrant, you get level three. The question is, what do you do after? 
Because now I'm level 3, I can gank, I can full clear, I can invade, I can unlock the map. So in a perfect world, you're pathing bot, your ball lane has prio, your mid lane has prio, you just cleared 1, 2, 3, so that means this camp is up, this camp is up, this camp is up, right? And their jungler can do two things in this game, right? He can either be pathing up, right? So he what it would look like is he would do 1, 2, 3, and he'd be pathing up, right? Or he could be pathing down, right? There's only real silly two options. One, two, then three, right? Either way, he has three camps that are untouched, right? So we're going to simplify this even further for us. And let's say their jungler does this. One, two, and three. His whole bot side is up and your whole bot side is up. If you have two winning lanes of prio and the jungle matchup itself is good for you to invade, guess what? You have unlocked a fucking really easy invade. You go like this and you bring your pri lanes of prio into the jungle and you secure yourself a camp advantage, one or two camps, just like that. Just because you pathed your lanes of prio, you now got a camp advantage. Let's say their jungler does this, one, two, three, and then now his camps are up right here, right? He has two options, path up or path down. It, it's not, it is not more complicated than that, right? Now you have really safe camps to clear here, right? You have a bot lane that you could possibly dive. You have a bot lane you could easily gank, right? It's very easy to play from this game state if the jungler is pathing opposite directions from you, right? What I would do in most cases if the enemy jungler is pathing the opposite direction from me is what I like to do is full clear. So I would do four, five, six, right? That's completely fine to full clear, do the crab, recall, and we'll get to the next step. But what we do have to recall is we have to run to the top side, right? But let's backtrack. So pathing is what we're talking about, right? Let's say we're full clearing, there's no pressure on the map, the jungler's pathing up, we have information, our two lanes have prio, they have wards here, thankfully they're they're warding, you could ping them to ward, they have a ward here, and this guy has a ward here. Beautiful, I've never seen more beautiful wards. What you can do, even if you clear slowly, you can do raptors, and then your krugs, right? And this does two things for you. Your red buff is cleared last, so your red buff lasts longer. Additionally, your raptors and your krugs are now synced. So this is generally clearing your camps. You want to sync up two camps. What I mean by this is you never want to clear your gromp unless you're clearing your wolves with it. You never want to clear your raptors unless you're clearing your krugs with it. Ideally, that's a perfect world. Obviously, if top is fighting two v like 1v2 and I'm on this gromp, gromp, I'm about to finish it, I'm walking like this, and I think it's going to be a winning play. I need to help him badly. Skip your skip your wolves. It's fine. If there's no urgency on the map anywhere. And you decide whether there's urgency or not. Then clear these two camps. They're synced up. Clear them always. Clear these two camps. They're synced up. Clear them always. Okay. Let's say good, good, perfect world. We don't need to worry about invading. We don't need to worry about any of that. Because their jungler path up. Okay. Um, We'll talk about... Oh, actually, sorry, the jungler path down. We're going we're gonna to talk about this first. The jungler path down. Because we're going to talk about 415 and how important 415 means in a little bit. But let's say the jungler path down. And you want to go for invades. I know a lot of people in lower elos like to invades. Invading is fine. It's good. Sure. We do these three camps. We These three camps are up. These three camps are up. We love to invade. Okay? So we go invade this guy. We take at least the blue buff, ideally possibly a fight on the gromp but you want to use your smite on this right if he's here if he's fighting you if he's not fighting you save your smite do not smite this and use your smite on the gromp if you know that you're only doing one camp and you're only doing this camp right here use your smite on it and just secure it and walk away what you want to do after is there is a timer you need to get to and it's 415 and i'll tell you guys why what is 415 about i've never seen this number before okay 415 is when your first camp respawns imagine a world you finish blue buff it's about 150 when you're finishing blue buff and you're doing your gromp and it's about 210 when i finish right it takes two minutes for the camp to respawn i want to be there at 415 to make sure i'm clearing this camp right on spawn that way i can clear my weak side and go into my strong side as fast as possible so the side you started is normally your weak side 
right? Because you're pathing to prio. So prio is your strong side down here, right? I'm clearing my weak side and I'm going into my strong side. This is some, this is a concept we talked about last time. I'll briefly go over it. Your weak side is pretty much the camps you always want to clear off your map. Your strong side is something you don't need to clear. So if this camp is up and this camp is up, but we can invade, we can dive, we can, you know, play for dragon, play for here, play for here. Go do that instead of your strong side camps. You don't need to do anything in the strong side if you have plays to make. But you always, always, always want to clear your weak side unless there's a defense dive, there's a defense wave, there's a defense thing you need to do mid. It does not matter what's going on bot because you need to clear this first. Okay. So, 415, right? We want to make it back to top at 415. How can we do this? We just invaded his his his, his blue buff, right? The time we finish our third camp is normally around 220 if you're clearing fast, 230 if you're clearing slowly, right? It takes about, you know, 20 seconds to walk all the way to here. Let's say we cleared slowly. It's 250 now. Another camp to take here would take another 20, 15 seconds. It's 305. Already, it's 305. It takes 7 seconds, 8 seconds to recall, 20 seconds to walk to your first camp. We want to get here by 415. How can we do it? Right? People know this by muscle memory nowadays. But the way you want to get to this camp is, let's say you don't want to invade this camp. Sure. The crab is coming up at 3.30, but the crab is not worth much EXP or um, gold. It's not worth much EXP or gold, right? So what you do is you leave the crab up. You leave both crabs up. You don't care about either crab. It's fine. And you can go and clear your camps right here, your camps right here, your camps right here, recall, and you'll make it top at a decent time, right? That's the goal. Some players, um, what, what, what could happen is let's say you invade the bot side, the enemy jungler is really, really smart, right? He's going to do his wolves, his gromp. He's going to run to the top side. And if you're stuck bot lane clearing all of these camps, he can just say, fuck it. I'm going to go invade this guy. I have a feeling the enemy jungler is clearing his whole bot side. If you do every single camp in the bot side, recall and run up here, you're not going to make it to when this camp respawns. So two things here. If you're either jungler in this position, both of you guys should be, be alert, alert, alert. This camp can be the next fight, especially if this top laner has prio, especially if, if the red side has prio. That, that, that way you want to be even more aware that this camp is extremely important. But to backtrack, so what do we do after we invade the blue buff? There's many things. Let's say you finish the blue buff invade at around 325, and you're walking out right here. Where's the jungle? Right... Uh... I don't know where the blue side jungle is up here. Um, let's say you're walking out right here, and the, you see the crab spawning on your way. You kill the crab. Like we talked about, always hold your ward. What you can do is you can one shot this crab, walk up, walk up, ward right here. Use your own ward, ward right here, because your whole bot side is still up, right? After you ward there, you walk to the top side. You can show, you can cross. I know we talked about not showing, but here it's about urgency, so you can show. You can walk up here, you can walk up here, and think about it. It's 3.30, we cleared this. It's going to be 3.35. By the time we walk from bot to top, it's going to be around 3.50. Right? By the time we clear the crab, it's going to be about 3.55. Right? There's still 20 seconds of downtime, but what you can do is you can go and help your top laner out if he needs to crash a wave, if there's a gank, and then fall back, clear your second respawn, clear your second respawn, recall, and because you had a ward here, your bot side's not getting invaded. Right? And if it is, you'll stay on the map and you'll stop him. Okay, you'll stop him. But after you clear your top side, you recall and then you run to your bot side. And you don't need to do any of these camps like we talked about. This is still your strong side. You still cleared your weak side at a good time. Now you've spent your gold and you can literally go and re-invade his whole bot side. But, okay, so back to, back to here. Let's say you cleared this camp really, really fast and you have a lot of time. What you want to do is you want to do the blue buff. Go to, go to, go to, go to your raptors, right? Go to your raptors, and if um, if you can, you want one of your bot lane or your mid lane to do the crab. Right? You don't care about this crab. It's it's a really pissed crab. Um, but you want to do your raptors, and you want to sync them up with your crugs, like I like I was talking about. You want to sync them up. In a perfect world, that's what you want to do. If the timing doesn't work, just do um, uh, just do your 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 raptors and your red buff recall, 
and again make it to your top side, clear your weak side, and then play it like this. So this is going to be your most normal standard pathing path uh, in almost every single game. You clear your weak side, and you return to your top side. So let's go back to us full clearing, 5, 6, 7, recall, and we're running up here. A common mistake that people do is, let's say you need to, let's say after your full clear, you gank bot lane, right? By the time you gank bot lane, it's 3.30, right? And then you, and then after 3.30, you're like, oh, crab's up. I go to crab, right? Now you finish crab at like 3.45 because you have to walk from crab all the way up. And then you recall now it's 3.52 when you're in base, 3.53, and you walk up here and it, it, it's it's about 4, like 20. It's a little bit later. It gets, some people waste even more time ganking bot and they lose a lot of time. It's really bad to make plays like this. So let's say your bot gank was successful. Just recall. Just instant recall. Let's say your bot gank lasts until 3.45, right? You sat here for a while. You made sure the gank was good. You you played off vision and the gank was good. You recall and you don't do this crap. You run straight up here because your tempo will be bad. Your tempo, you want to make it to this timer right here at 4.15. And the rest of the game should be simple. You clear your weak side, you ignore your strong side if, if, if needed, and you go play into the strong side lanes. Same thing applies for this side. And same thing applies if you're pathing top for some reason. Cool. Any questions about this? All right, we will go. Yeah, I do have one question, actually. Uh, yeah, what's up? Um, so, like mid, in terms of like pairing your uh, clears, there's two things that can disrupt that out of your control. Kind of um, enemy invades, but I guess you would know maybe to have some idea about that, or uh, your own team clearing your camps. So, how do you think about things when only one of your camps is up? Do you ignore it till the it's a pair, or do you? Just go infinite, clear it, and it's off. Yeah. So let's say, um, while let's say let's say I did, uh, let's say it's like ten minutes in the game, right? And for some reason, their jungler literally just invaded this and walked away, and yeah. I'm not touching this for the next thirty seconds. I come, I come through, and I see. Oh wait, my grump is up, but my walls isn't up. That's weird. You still clear it, right? In I'm saying in the perfect world, you want to sync them up. It doesn't matter if you can't make it to a perfect world, right? That's perfect world. So. Don't worry about it too much. Don't stress it. There's games where I'm clearing my Gromp while my teammates fucking clearing my Raptors. And it's really depressing. But that's just life, right? Don't get tilted. Don't get frustrated. Move on from it. Um, but it's okay if you can't sync them up together. Okay. And then as a laner, are you, like, griefing your jungler hard then? If you are taking camps these days? Yes. Um, yeah. If your jungler is actively farming the camps, yes. If they're not actively farming the camps... No, no one's getting the resources, so the t laners should take it. So if you literally see your la your laners or your junglers spam ganking and you're playing lane, and he's just ganking, he's just ganking, he's just ganking, take his camps because no one's taking them. But junglers shouldn't play like that nowadays. It's way more about actively thinking and being smart on the map, making sure okay. your timers make sense. Anyone else? Okay. So that's just the basics of pathing. Path Again, I want to emphasize that after your first clear, the most important thing is you clear a weak side, you clear a weak side, then go into either your strong side, whichever whichever side that is. Normally, it's going to look like this. You want to clear these two camps. It, you can ignore the camps or you can clear them. So let's say that there's nothing to do on the map. And I'll try and help decide what that means for you guys later. But sometimes there's nothing to do on the map. So after you clear... Your raptors and your krugs, just recall and restart the whole process. Just recall. You don't want to spend too much time. Because later on in the game, let's say you clear this, right? Because if you clear it at 4.15 perfectly, you're not going to be done until 4.30. Right? It'll spawn at 6.30. 6.30 is also around when the time your first camp spawns, your first buff spawns. So your buff and your thing might spawn at the same time. 6.50 is around that time this will spawn. So everything up, everything up here is, is spawning. So you, again, like you want to make it to top side around 6.30, 6.30, 6.40, 6.50. So you don't want to spend too much time down here to where you clear this, you clear this, you gank bot, you do dragon, you like, you, there's just too much. If you're deciding that this is not worth 
Like, or if this is worth worth less than a dragon, than a scuttle crab, than a bot gank, then as long as you're aware the enemy jungler can invade this and take everything, that's fine. As long as you're making that decision actively. Cool. Um, the next thing I wanted to touch on was um. So, so let, let me recap what we're trying to do today is we have three more main points. Um, ganking, jungle tracking, uh, what mid game looks like, and kind of like how to play for objectives. Afterwards, we're going to look at some Viego stuff. Uh, if I have time, like Kane stuff or whatever else. And if you guys have any reviews, like any uh, VODs on YouTube already uploaded, we have some time to look at that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and look at ganking. So, ganking. Actually, let's first talk about ganking. So ganking is a theme, or is a thing that a lot of players try and make happen, right? People love to gank, and laners are afraid of ganking. Um, laners play very cautiously of ganking, and to help visualize, does anyone have a VOD? Okay, I have someone else's VOD from a while ago. Um, I'm sure he won't mind, but pretty much ganking is a idea of you go into a lane right and you try and get a kill you try to get conditions you try to do something with the lane um the problem with ganking is that there's a high chance for you to get nothing and like we talked about um your camps are worth about one um one wave right so this guy this wasn't necessarily a gank but this guy what this guy needs to think about here is he's doing his two camps right and he has a top wave that he wants to that he wants to look at right this guy needs to crash this wave look at the wave right here right if uh, he solo killed the enemy top winner but he needs to crash this wave right here right so this is not a gank but this is a good play because he needs to help his top winner crash the wave so the only time i'm actually ever ganking is if there are good and um, clear opportunities for the gank, if it makes sense um, to, to make the gank happen. So, let me see if I can um, pull up a an example. But, you can see most of my early games, I'm not actually getting many kills. I'm not actually ganking too many people. Um, even this. This is a great example. Okay. So, I'm in the top side here. And, look at top wave. This wave is going to shove into my top laner very soon. And I'm not actually playing for the kill here. I kind of am. He has no flash. I have flash. It's going to be pretty easy to kill him. But what I'm playing for is the fact that this wave coming up very soon will die to this wave. It's a freeze, right? Will die to this wave. If Quinn wants to fix the wave, she needs to walk up all the way to like here. Even, for, even off the screen. You guys can't even see. He needs to walk up so far in the lane. If he's that far up in the lane and I gank him, he's going to die if he has no flash. But the point is, I'm not playing for this kill. I'm not playing with the kill in mind. The moment this guy pings, oh, he has no flash, I'm like, oh, maybe it's going to be okay to gank. Maybe it's not bad. But I'm really thinking about this wave here. And the big thing to think about here is I path up. So my first camp that respawns is down here. I want to make it to their ASAP. But I decide... That denying this top play and making this happen is worth more than potentially both of these guys. And why do I think that? It's because he path down, I path up. So let's say I make this top play happen. My top player will freeze one to two more waves than just this one. Right? So that's that's already two waves. That's already three waves. Right? Even if it freezes two waves, that's already the same equivalent to this. That's how far he's going to put Quinn behind. But on top of that, his whole top side is up. Even if I get one of these camps, I equalize the map decently because I'm getting kill XP, I'm getting gold. So, that's why this gank, 0% chance for me to get nothing. Literally 0%. At worst case, I'm going to chunk this guy to half, he's going to live because I missed my EQ, I flash, I DC. He's going to live, he'll get half HP, because realistically he should lose some HP, and then his wave will be stuck. And then Darius can solo kill him, Darius will make him lose EXP, will make him lose minions. But... As you guys saw, this guy kind of just inted, I kill him, and my Darius is in a really good position right now to carry the game. So, back to what I was thinking about, what I was talking about earlier, 
ganking in general, you only ever want to gank if it's going to be a guaranteed play. And you'll see that a Gurren plays like this, like almost, like I like almost perfectly. He doesn't make bad plays. Um, and it's not to say ganking is a bad thing. It's just ganking is risky, which makes it very bad. If you have a 50% chance for the gank to work, it's a bad play. You know, you know, 50% of the time it's not going to work. So why would you do it? You don't want to go in the day and like flip a coin whether you're going to win or lose. That's a bad way to play. It's a bad way to think. It's going to make you frustrated. So make coordinated and, and active smart plays is what you want to do. Uh, you don't want to make like plays that are flippy. Um, so your gank should be as planned as possible. Um, otherwise, what you're playing for is waves and uh, conditions. What I mean by waves is like we saw in the VOD right here. The wave was what I was playing for. It was in a perfect position for me to play for the wave. And anything on top of that is just a bonus reward, right? And conditions, what I mean by that is, like like I said, if I got this guy to half HP or more, I would still gain something. So that's why, that's the only reason why you'd ever want to impact a lane. Let's say your mid laner is getting destroyed. He's playing um, Tristana and, and we're playing Zed, right? The enemy is playing Tristana and you're playing Zed, and he's getting shit on under his turret. He literally can't play the game. Right? This is, what, this is what it looks like. If you gank mid and put the enemy mid laner to half HP, even less maybe, or more, or you, like just get, get, get its abilities, get something, then your Zed can now play the lane a little bit more. Right? So that's why you would gank, not to, not to kill people, but to impact their lanes. So for the next minute, the next 30 seconds, the position they're in is either even more advantageous or stabilized. That's why ganking is powerful. Okay. Any questions about ganking? Alright. We'll move on to jungle tracking. So, every camp worth 4 CS. Right? Everyone should know that by now. Um, if you don't, that's fine. If you miss a few raptors, if you miss a few wolves or a few krugs, you're going to end up getting less than 4 CS. So let's say someone finished a full clear, they have 23 CS. That means they either missed one raptor, maybe one krug, maybe one wolf. Normally it's the krugs. It's the most common camp to people, that people miss. Uh, what will happen is uh, every time you see the enemy jungler, you want to build the habit of holding tab and looking how, at how much CS they have. So, for example... In this game, I see that Nunu ganks um, bot lane here, right? And the moment I see Nunu, I hold tab. And that was a very, very slim second, but you can see my eyes are literally glued to right here when I'm holding tab, where, wherever it is. I held tab in that small second, and I know exactly how much CS he has, right? He has 12. And I also panned to bot lane. Um, soon i also pan a ball in and i see what buffy has and in this time i've deduced that he cleared his whole top side and his whole bot side is up to take right he cleared all this and his whole bot side is up right so i can i can't invade anything because his whole bot side is taken right and i can't invade here because i'm in the top side but that's jungle tracking knowing what camps they did as fast as you possibly can by looking at what buffs they have and what what creep score they have. So another thing Nunu could have done, we talked about this earlier, is he could have done red, raptors, and then gromp, right? Then he would also hit level three and he could also gank like this. The chances of that are very unlikely nowadays. It's more so it's more so gonna look like this. One, two, three. Um but if I wanted to maybe like flip a coin and see maybe maybe he maybe this is up, I could go and hit the hit the plants and check. Um but that is the essence of jungle tracking. And we can understand that for the rest of the game, he's going to want to clear like this down and place him about side. With this being number one and this being number two. But he also doesn't have to. He's playing Nunu. He can clear the camps here and then still gank bot. That just leaves his top side up. So let's say we see he has blue buff and we see he has 24 CS or 28. That means his whole top side's up and I could go and invade his top side. Right? That's the essence of jungle tracking. So again, Nunu snowballs through mid, 
Um, very where, where is it right here? And he has he has his blue buff. I don't think I hold tab right away because I'm in the middle of fighting. He has 20. So what this means, I can instantly tell what this means. He has blue buff. He has so so we went from 12 to 20, right? And at the time we know he got blue buff, so that puts him at 16. So how did he get to 20, right? And he could get to 20 from Gromp, Wolves, or Crab. So does anyone want to speak up and 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 say what they think he got to 20 with? You can type it as well. It's fine. Yeah. So someone said scuttle in the chat, and that's 100% accurate, right? So instantly you know that this crab is gone and this blue buff is gone, right? Because the timing is what matters here. It's 3:39. Nunu just ganked bot a second ago, like literally a second ago, literally a fraction of a second ago, and he's coming to mid at 3.39. This, it's very hard for him to clear both of these camps, which take about 15 seconds each, to clear both in 15 seconds and make it to here at 3.49. It just, it's very hard to make that timing. So you can track based off of timing as well. It's not just about the actual facts that you can see, because realistically, I don't know. I don't even know if he did all these. I don't even know if he, like, if he, he could have done um, red buff, wolves, and then gromp. That would get you level three, and he could have gone to what? It's about timing. Timing really helps make things make things clear. And the other thing is just what's what normally happens um, in normal games. So this game, Raptors is spawning, 4-10. That means his second clamp that he cleared was this camp right here. Right, which means this Krugs are up. I have actually missed it this game. That means he that means his path was red, Raptors, Gromp, Bot Gank. Right? So both of these camps are up. And that's how you, that's another way you can track as well to process what does Nuno have to do in the bot side. He only has one camp up right here. So if he's ganking a bot, and I take his whole top side, he's really depressed. Um, but that's just a more, this is more jungle tracking. I can give more examples at a future point, but if anyone has any questions right now, feel free to ask, but I'm going to get through the next point if not. Cool. So we'll get to mid game, right? And we wrote this down. This is a general idea of what, what you want to think about mid-game. Who is strong on my team? Who do I want to play with? Who can I make every single play with? So, for example, we're going to look at this game. Score is 8-3 to three right now. Not great. Score is 12-5 right now. Not great. Right? Let's see if I ever hold tab. Right, right here. So, in this game, I'm actively thinking, who do I want to play with? And it's pretty obvious when you look at it, but sometimes it takes people longer. Right? There's two things to think about. Items score and cs this guy has a lot more items this guy has a lot more items supports are like even this guy's a little bit more items but are a zacchus level nine so if anything i want to prioritize it like this i want to play with my garen if i can if i can't i want to play with zach if i can't play with either i am not playing with these guys Right, so there's not even a three here. Actually, these guys are out of my game. This is out of my head. I'm not even thinking about them, because in the fight they're going to be useless. So I'm trying to get myself into the game by playing with the two people who are good, who are strong. So if I can, if if you are to make plays with Nefiri or Vayne, it's going to be really risky. Um, so making mid game plays with Garen or Zach is really, really, really important. Let's say there's a dragon fight. Um, and the Garen's top side split pushing. It's better for you not to do not to fight for the dragon. Um, but for example, in this this case right here, you can see that my Zach is top side. The Zach killed the Tristana. Vayne is dead. That is a pretty good trade to me. The Tristana is really really useful, and my Vayne is, was not. And my Garen is here. Oh fucking perfect. Zach isn't. It's pretty unfortunate. But my Garen is. I'm gonna fight with my Garen. Right? That's the that's the essence of mid game. Whether this goes good or bad, this will be one of my better fights in the game. This four is twelve to four, yet I'm still taking a good fight. That's that's what is really important when you're playing games like this. I end up getting the smite and we get end up getting kills, 
flashes, and um, now this losable game, or now this lost game, is more winnable. This game was really, really hard. The whole team wanted to FF as well. Other than that, in the mid game, you always want to be focused on objectives. So you saw me here, I was running at the dragon. Objectives are turrets, right? Herald, Baron, Dragon. And some objective, like a hidden objective, is terrain control. Let's say you're playing for Dragon, and it's not for a minute. You want to control as much of this space, as much of this space, it doesn't matter, it depends on how strong you are. And you want to make it so you have wards lined up all around here, so they can't, they can't like walk through unless they're unless or you're gonna spot them out. So let's say it's a minute before dragon, and you have all your camps up. You want to clear your top side, skip your bot side, go here, sit with your support, and control the terrain. That's an objective in itself. Um, if there's no objective to play for, let's say this terrain gets you nowhere, then you clear all of this and all of this. If all your camps are up. Questions? How long before drink spawn? Normally one minute. One minute is a good um it's a good place to start. Um uh, it also depends if your support has no wards. So if you want another condition that you need to track. If your support has no wards, then keeping the terrain does nothing. Keeping the control of the terrain it does not do much. Yes, if I'm playing for the dragon, I would literally sit there. Maybe a minute is an extreme uh, for for solo queue. But what's going to happen is when, when enemy sees the dragon is coming, they're going to walk in. right? So ideally, you're sitting in the position. You have this already all set up by, um, like by a minute before. And... If they're trying to contest, you'll fight them a minute before the dragon in on your turns, right? And if they're not fighting you, then that means you're getting the dragon in a minute. So you pretty much take time away from these camps to do the dragon. And like you talk about, this is your weak side, this is your strong side right here. So you clear these camps. So let's say they give they give up this terrain. They give up the side of the map so they can play for this side of the map, right? And they can play for this tier two. At the very least, if they get this tier 2 for the dragon, let's say it's worth it in your head, they don't get your whole top side as well. Because it's not up. This camp's not up, this camp's not up, this camp's not up. What is up is your bot side. Cool. So, for now, I'm going to go backwards. So, we just talked about some more advanced concepts. Now I'm going to talk about mechanics, basic mechanics, combos on, well right now we're going to start off with Viego, but specific things to do on any champion, um, most importantly just the basics of playing League of Legends, pretty much. Because a lot of people forget how important clicking is, how important, you know, just the most basic, basic things in the game, people forget how important they are. And then we'll look at some vehicle companies. But one thing people miss out a lot on is where should your cursor be if you're trying to land abilities? Right? Where should it be? People don't know, right? If I if I would ask someone, if you would ask a friend, they'd just be like, they, I don't I don't know what they would answer, honestly. The answer is you want it to be on top of their character, a little bit under their body, because look, if I aim my cursor on top, look at where my cursor goes. It's very easy for them to go down here and dodge the ability. If I aim my cursor on the top of their head, it's very, very, it's very, very, very risky for it. It's very hard for it to land. If I aim my ability right on their body, right on their legs, like right on their torso, like under their legs, it's very, very hard for them to dodge it, especially if you're closer to them. The idea about skill shots is the further away they are, easier it is to dodge right because the skill shot has time to cast the skill shot has time to like fly through the through the um terrain and everything so the they further the, they are the harder it is for skill shots to land but to make things um 
Simple, for when you're closer to them, is you always want to aim under their body. You don't want your cursor all the way out here. You don't want your cursor back here when you're aiming something. You want it on their body. Why? If imagine I'm out here, and I need to walk backwards. How am I going to move my cursor from here all the way here? It's, it's, like, it's like so much movement. Like my, my hands hurt while doing this. If I'm aiming like this while I'm next to this guy, I can click this guy and I can move right away. It's, very, it's, very, it's much quicker. So you want to be clicking next to each other. That's the next point. You want to be clicking like this. You don't want to have them so far away. You don't want to have your cursor all the way over in Narnia. It's hard to, to control your character. You can see many people like as they're, as they're aiming, they're walking like this, they're walking like this, and they're like... The target's all the way back here, man. The target's not nowhere near you. Okay. If they are max range from you, right, it is better to predict than it is to aim right on their body. Right? The closer you are, the more you want to be precise about your cursor. The further they are, the more you want to predict. That's why Blitzcrank Q is just like, it's normally a max range ability. You want to predict it. When they're on top of you, you want to... Um, Put your cursor on their body but from here i could predict that he's gonna juke down from here i can predict that he's gonna juke up right and you can see how i'm not actually fully hitting the main part of the ability on them but it's still hitting right so that's the idea of landing skill shots right same thing with my ult this is exact same thing i want to throw it on their body right and this will give me a better chance of, of hitting especially since i'm playing viego the ult is pretty um Pretty, pretty hard to miss if you're putting your uh, cursor on their body. So, we'll talk about some co co some controls. So, I level abilities with alt. Some people do c control. It doesn't really matter what that is. The important thing to think about is quick cast with indicator. So, how this is my normal cast. Oh, uh, actually, that's bad. This is my normal. This is my normal cast with Q, right? You can see it just goes. It just goes. This is when I hold Shift and Q. It shows me the range, right? And while I'm playing, I can right click and it'll cancel it. And I can just still play like this, right? And I can see, so how far away will this hit, right? Yes, it will, right? Because I can see how far away it is. It barely, it really shouldn't because the cursor is like, the range is kind of messed up. But um, same thing with my E, will this hit the wall, right? You can test, this might actually do it. Yeah, it, it barely does. But you can, you can check when you have these settings right here, quick cast with indicator. So set this all to whatever you want, but you want to have a secondary way to make this work. And the, the thing that you need to do, otherwise your char character will be messed up, is you need to set player move click. You need to set this to shift MB2. Whatever you're going to be holding while using your abilities. So let's say I change this to uh, control Q, right? I need to can change this to control MB2. Otherwise, I, I, I will I will click and then I won't be able to get out of my I won't be able to get out of this um, So you need to change that actually Is that right? Yeah, that's right, that's right Okay, so enough about that That's just to help you guys a bit um, a stop key is really important oh, Right there a stop key is really important. You guys want to have a stop key. What so if I imagine I'm in the middle of a fight and I'm doing this, like if, if I if I want to move all the way up here, but I I, I need to stop myself. Like just being able to stop is really important. Additionally, having um your camera control, your F keys on keys that are easy for you to access is really important as well. So for me, I use Z X Z C and V, uh, but anyone else can use whatever else. I like to center your camera on self with spacebar. I don't have my screen locked. So I normally, I always have it unlocked, right? But sometimes you'll see me play like this for a while and I'm just holding spacebar while I'm playing, right? And that's fine. So when I'm in a major team fight, I'm holding it. But normally you want to let your camera like, like you want to let your camera free. But it's okay to practice with holding yourself down. This is how I practice when I first started. I hold my spacebar down while I'm playing, okay? That will help your camera control, okay? Let's think about some Viego basics, right? When you're clearing your caps, right, and you're level two or three, you always want to Q, auto W auto, always. That's just the simplest combo you could ever you could ever do. So, Q, auto W auto, right? Do it one more time to show how 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 fast it can look. 
Right? And that's the, that's your biggest biggest burst you can do against camps. Right? If you're playing against an actual champion, normally what you're doing is you're queuing, autoing, eing, autoing, 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 charging W, autoing, and then ulting. Right? And the most important thing is when they're stunned on Viego, you want to make sure your ult casts and hits them and they don't flash away while you're ulting. So this is a max range stun. It lasts a long time. This stun does not last long, right? So if I stun like this and then ult, they can flash. They have a little bit of time to flash, right? So if they have flash and you want to guarantee the kill, you what you do is you wouldn't do this because they can flash it, what you would do is you would do this. It would be W Q auto R. If your W is max max maxed out, if it's halved, you don't have time to do all that. If you don't have time to even auto attack, if it's maxed out or if it's not maxed out, it's halfway on your Viego W. What you do is you charge it halfway, you Q and then you ult. Your ult needs to land for them to take a lot of damage, slow them by 99%, which is insane. And the lower they are, the more important your ult is. Let's say they're full HP. Obviously, if they're full HP, you're not ulting. You're not killing them. So don't use your ult like that. Cool. So again, a basic a basic fight on Viego would look like auto, Q, auto. I'm kiting. I'm kiting while I'm moving. I'm kiting while I'm moving. This is okay if I'm trying to one-shot them, right? That looks like a, that looks like a normal fight to me. So if they're um, fighting me, fighting... Fighting. I'm moving back every single time I click. I'm moving back. I'm moving back. I'm charging this auto and then ult. Right? So you just want to make sure you land your ult after you land your W in most cases. And you want to save your abilities for as long as possible. So let's bring up an actual vehicle fight. And you'll see how I only ever E like this. If I need to get into the fight ASAP. Otherwise, you want to have your E for the fight itself. But I'm very far from the fight, so I need an E for movement speed. You'll see here, I'm all about urgency. Even if I flashed early, the idea is I need to get to this fight ASAP. So I could have I could have automatically flash ulted and saved my W. For some reason, I didn't want to flash. I don't know why, per se. Okay, this is nothing, this is nothing. So again, something something to note here when I'm fighting on Viego is I land my stun, I auto attack, I Q, and I'm walking backwards. I walked, instead of, normally what happens is you Q, you click right here while you're queuing, and your character walks forward. I don't want to walk into the turret range. I want to click backwards after I land my Q while I'm auto attacking. Again, I also click down towards the end. So you can see me here. This is a this is a normal Viego fight. I just killed Azaya. I'm charging W for max range and I'm trying to dodge abilities. I do my autos and in this case I'm walking forward. I'm as I'm kiting I'm walking into them because I know this is going to be a winning fight, right? Normally you don't know if the fight's going to be winning. So a baseline habit is walk backwards after you auto attack every single time. Look at one more fight. That's an auto. Okay. Not much here actually. So this is a this is an actual team fight here. So what you want to do is using your dodge abilities is good. Using your E to stay in fog. I don't know which angle you're coming from is good. Look at how I'm always waiting to go second. My ult was a little bit poor there, as you can see. If I ulted when my stun, it would have been much better. Although, the Kiana ulted my way, it's fine. Um, again, like look at look at how I'm playing. I'm not I'm not frontlining. I'm not up there. That's not for me. That's not my job to be up there. I need to stand in the back. I'm even standing behind my ADC. So look at this fight. I have my flash, I have my ult. Using my ult to cancel CC, right? You go unstoppable. 
Also, I want a slow mirror, so it makes my, my W easier to land. If he goes down like he did, my kind will kill him. If he goes up, I will kill him. So that's why E upwards, not downwards. Okay. One more fight. I lose this game, by the way, because my my, my top lane and my oh, my top lane and my mid laner were really really bad. Unfortunately. Okay, so this is a really important thing to look at in Viego. There's four people here. One person here. We have three and two, right? These guys are coming in. There's going to be a five right here. We can fight 5v4 like this. Their Jace will be flanking. Not good. So, to fix that, after I clear this pink, I throw my E down. I, I, I dance around. I'm not showing that I'm going either direction in my fog. I'm dancing here, okay? And they don't know which way I'm going to go. What I could have done if I want to be even smarter about it is I walk up so they think I'm going that way. But it's okay. So I want to show you guys what happens is I'm dancing. And now I'm off vision. I'm hunting the Jace. I'm hunting him. And I'm able to change into the fight like this because I'm able to track people in the fight. I'm able to track where, where everyone is. And you look again in this fight. So this is a fight where I'm going in first. Oh, because my whole team is with me. I counted. I literally just counted here. One, two, three. I have one, two, three, and then I'm four right here. And I don't see anyone. If people are here or here, it's too late. They're too far away. We're grouped up right here, and I'm coming like this. We're very, 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 very fast. I'm playing Viego. So the Sonos missed his hook, obviously. It could have been a lot prettier. I missed my W, which is even worse. But that's the point. Again, ulting, trying to match time with Poppy ult. I see Poppy ult charging. Yeah, I see him flashing away. I'm trying to match the timing. Cool. So just some Viego stuff. Some fun Viego facts. Um, we don't have this anymore. Anyone have any questions about Viego stuff? General fighting stuff. General, general, general like clicking, basic tips. Oh, just any thoughts, I guess, because uh, this will be the last time before we go and talk about um, your VODs. Anyone who's brought their own VOD. Feel free to type it. Or oh, whatever. If you don't have anything, then let me see if anyone has sent me something. Who's here? Uh, oh, yeah, what's I up? have one question. Yeah. So, about Viego. Yeah. Could you say what's the optimal win condition for Viego? Um, okay, so in general, Viego wants to be... The way I see Viego is he's not a champion that spam ganks. He's a champion that needs farm. Okay, He needs items to be useful. right? So the first step is you need to be having items. So if that means you're making really good ganks and you're getting gold, fine. Go gank. If you're not getting gold, you're not winning on Viego. Second thing is you always want to go second in the fight unless you have numbers advantage. Right? Numbers advantage, like I counted, they had four, I had three, so I went in first. Right? You always want to go in second, and that means if they're engaging on us or, or we're engaging on them, I am hiding in bushes, I'm hiding in fog, right? Waiting for the fight to begin, then I'm going in. That's really important on Viego to do because you're not frontline. You're not strong enough to be frontline. You don't build tanky items. You build damage, right? Third, fourth item is when you build tanky items, but even then, you're not that tanky. You need to wait for someone to go in first. Even if they're engaging on your back line, it's really good for you. And the last thing is you always want to look at the targets that are low in the fights and kill them but you do not want to overextend so far to where you chase their backline. Just in general, playing the game with your teammates, no matter what champion you're playing, but especially on Viego, is super important. Kill the frontline first before panicking and trying to kill their backline. Make the fight simple, not complicated. 
that, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Anything else? I actually don't think I have a VOD as well. So if any of you guys have a game you played maybe on this patch, um, otherwise it might be a pretty short class, guys. I, I have got one question. Yeah, what's up? So, I remember... So, earlier you were saying, like, clear your weak side before clearing your strong side. That's right. And then... So, that makes it so you take the riskier side first. Right. And then you can make a play on your strong side. And right. then it's that you can... You fall back to do your strong side camps right. after you make the play. Yeah. That's... Yeah. What happens if you make the play and die? Like, is it still just go back to your strong side camps? So let's say I clear this, right? I clear this, and I go bot, and I'm diving, or I'm ganking, or yeah. doing anything, and yeah. I die, right? Yeah. So depending on how much time you spent in the spot play, let's say you sat in the bush for 30 seconds and then died, right? This camp is spawning in two minutes, right? Yeah. So you need to return to this camp. You want to return to this camp right when it spawns. That's the ideal world, right? right. So let's say that this camp is just like not going to spawn for another minute like you die really fast you clear this you clear this and you run by and you die or you run mid and you die right because realistically if you clear this and you clear this by the time you're going into the bot side it takes like a minute maybe a minute and a half ah not a minute and a half but it takes a while for you to go bot right you, you're, you're traveling all the way from here to here so the timing should work out where you can walk from base it's another 20 seconds and make it here but sometimes you die really fast the answer to the question is if your top lane is playable towards, you want, you can reverse your clear and play towards top side. That's an option. Okay. But the best case scenario is if your bot side is still defended, because what can happen is if you die bot, their jungler can go and invade you. So number one priority is defend your strong side, right? Defend this. And if it's safe, what you can do is you can run and help your weak side, right? And then return to your weak side camps. And make your game simple. So the only thing anybody would check is if this is um, safe. And if it's not safe, you go defend it. And if your top lane is like winning, you can also just reverse and go top. Because normally what happens is if, you, if you're if you dying in this spot fight, that means the 3v3 or even the 3v2 went bad. Right? So you don't actually want to come back bot ever again. Yeah. So sometimes it's good to just go top. Answer your oh. question? Yeah. Um, that also ties into ganking, right? That, that might mean you're making a bad gank, right? Bad, bad dive, bad play. Like, normally when you are ganking, you are interacting with your lane, you don't want to um, die. Dying is the worst. Dying is bad for everyone, right? Maybe the, the least bad for support. But it's, it's bad for everyone, and it especially is bad for jungling. For junglers. For sure. So. I, I'm, a, like, the death is a mistake. It's more just, like, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, happen, okay, yeah. Like, so... It's like yeah, yeah. So I when you're in the game, line. you need you need to yeah focus up. That's good. That's good. Um, but in after the game, you really would want to focus on not the path like, that comes after. Yeah. Why did you die? Why did you think it was a good play? Like maybe in the game, you're like, yeah, man. I thought about it. I thought about it. And it's like like my Nautilus gonna hit hook, and we're just gonna win the three v three. And you understand why it's actually not good, or maybe you just missed executed, and that's fine, right? But you need to look at the play that came before your pathing looked messed up, because that's a uh, the main focus. Cool. Playing as five team, comes in French and English, sorry. Flex you all good. Um I, I, will, I will mute it, don't worry. Cause we're just looking. so we're looking at champs here. So right, so like let's say I'm going to a game here and I'm playing Vi. This is how I'll review this game. Okay. So I'm playing Vi here and I'm looking at my my, my champs. Instantly I see Karma, he's a supportive mid laner. I want this Karma to be useful in the early game. I want this Karma to move around the map. I feel like it was carry. Rumble wants some attention, but it's also okay isolated. Blitzcrank, he can fight, he can roam if he has prior, right? So instantly, the two things I'm thinking about is in incorporate my mid lane in any place. I can help my, my, my top lane or I can help my bot lane, right? And in no order that necessarily matters, but I want to help my top lane or I want to help my bot lane. Now I look at the enemy champs. They have... Garen with Ignite, right? They have Talia, who's hard to... Um, no, I mean, Talia's easy to find. I mean, what, the jungle matchup normally, to me, doesn't matter too much. But it, unless they're like a hard counter to your champion, but Talia isn't. Especially when you have a champion like Karma. Karma could shut down Talia really easily. So, Garen, Ignite, Cho'Gath, 
Um, we're gonna have Pryo, hard Pryo into mid. Zaya, Soraka, very like killable bot lane. One hook, they're fucking dead, right? So it's likely that we have Pryo bot lane. If these guys are playing with Pryo, we're gonna kill them, right? So they can't do this, right? So the Soraka and the uh, Zaya should be very terrified, right? Rumble and Garen. It's likely Rumble will get Pryo for the early levels and Kamas Pryo. We have three winning lanes on paper, right? We can do literally anything. Important thing to do as a jungler here, I need vision on this guy. I need vision on this guy right here very badly, right? If this guy's pathing up to the Skarin, I need to know. I need to tell my Rumble, bro, chill out. Don't play for Pryo. Especially playing in comms, you would tell him, leave top lane. Leave, leave, leave. Drop a ward. Go invade him. Go leave your wave. Fuck your wave. We're going to win bot side. Right? If he's pathing bot lane, I need to know, can I invade him? Can I counter gank it? Can I, again, warn these guys that he's coming? Um, that's my early game. So, I want to get wards, and if I were to tell you where the path, I want to go bot lane to unlock my Blitzcrank. If my rumble went ignite, it'd be a different story. I want to go and play. Normally, when your laner has ignite, they need to win first three, four levels. Otherwise, they're going to be useless. So, I wouldn't be surprised if Talia paths up, right? You path down, and... You unlock Blitzcrank on the map, and he's just killing everyone. That's the way I look at this game. Also, this guy can come dive bot lane. If Talia pats up, it's a four-man dive. All four of you guys are connecting, and you guys are killing these two. Right? Um, otherwise, you two can pair up and kill this Talia at any point. So that's what I'm thinking about when I come into game. Uh, I'm going to lower the... Oh, it can't. Okay, so lane invade is also... Uh, it's not great. Uh, for the bot lane, Vi's not that strong. So I wouldn't lane a bit. I would just clear top the bot. Good. Looks like a good start. That we start. Good. Kiting a bit. Good. Saving saving smite. It's good. Save smite on Gromp too. If, if, so the reason why you would want to save... So I talked about this in my last class. But the reason why you want to save smite on both of these is because your, your single target damage is insane. It's very fast. And HP is like fake on jungle. You, you'll heal it. You'll heal it by your fourth camp. So, this is a camp I would smite. Maybe even your Raptors. Um, just because you do so much good single, ta uh, single target damage. Otherwise, the simple rule is clear your first camp. Just clear, or just smite your first camp. It's a simple rule. Smiting your first camp is the best thing to follow. If you don't want to overcomplicate smites. Smiting your second camp does nothing. Okay, so at this point of the game, we already failed step one in my head. I don't know where the Talia's pathing. Right? Actually... It looks like, yeah, these guys started in lane. This guy got vision of you. So you guys have no vision of their jungler. So what I would tell my Karma to do if she's pushing, go get vision, right? If the Zaya and the Soraka are playing for Pryo, they are a double ranged matchup. I need to know where the Talia is because the Talia counter ganks, we actually don't win 3v3, right? Because we're not strong enough just yet. Just because we land a hook doesn't mean they can't flash afterwards or do anything. I need to know where Talia is. So I would ask my Karma to play for Pryo. I don't know why she's not playing for Pryo here. She's a ranged champ into melee champ. She can spam Qs into the wave. But I'd ask her to go get wards. I need, I need to know what's going on in this game. So like I said, bot lane lands one hook and they win, right? They obviously won the bot lane, right? We can take a full clear now. That's fine. Bot lane's going to shove in this wave, right? And it's going to reverse back into us. So what I want to do is I want to I get back to my top side, clear this, and go gank bot. Within the next two minutes. It's my thought process. After the crab, I want to instant recall. So even all this is pointless. We're not, we don't care about mid lane. We don't care about killing this Cho'Gath. We care about this. If your Karma is holding a freeze like this, she's already tar She's already pressuring their, their Cho'Gath to walk up. You don't need to be here. Also, recalling on ward is a terrible, terrible decision. So one, you walked on the ward for no reason. And then two, you... Recalled on it, which is terrible. Okay, so again, look at look look at the timing. Three thirty five already, and we recalled at four minutes. Look at look at your camp sequence. Every single camp is almost up already. Your 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 wolves are about to spawn. This guy's about to spawn. And what is there to do on this in this on this, on this mid wave? There's a rocka as first move, right? That's number that's number one. Number two. This wave is going to crash no matter what. You're not going to stop this, right? These guys will crash this wave and they'll leave. The only reason why they'll ever die here is if they're inters, and you should not count on them inting. So realistically, I'm going to see you walk here and you're not going to get a single thing. Oh, well, you got to kill someone. Fuck. 
This, these guys are not human. Right? This guy could have just, like, walked this way. And he would have flashed there. And you would have never killed him. Right? All And this whole play is just flip. At the same time, your karma is also missing minions back here. Right? So, like, let's say you get nothing. You get, you get a flash. You've actually made your karma share EXP with you, lose four or five minions, and you've... It's just a flip of a play. And now your camp sequence is fucked up. So now the next time you can help bot lane is in forever because your weak side is up. Now you have to go back to your weak side and clear it. Now you've delayed the time you can help bot lane by two minutes almost. Yeah, I thought something weird happened here. It's okay. You're, you're, you're practicing Dragon Counts. This is good. Um, okay, so at this point... So, the thing about here is timing. Look. These minions are all going to be dead. By the time you're in this tribe bush. If they use all their abilities on these minions and then leave and recall... What have you accomplished by being here? Nothing. Literally nothing. Unless you know your laners are going to like freeze, but they need to recall. They're not even going to stay here. They don't want to stay here. So, the way you would fix this is right here. It's hard to see because you have a little th overlay. This wave right here is the wave we were looking at earlier. You would skip this camp right here. Again, skip your strong side. This is your strong side. Two, two strong side camps. And you would go sit in this p bush that's pink watered. Thank you so much, Blitzcrank, for pink watering this bush. They have no flashes. Probably. They're fucking dead. Even if they don't, you're going to get a lot, probably. And then dragon afterwards. Right? You want to sink yourself. This, this would be like the next next level of coaching. You want to sink yourself and be parallel to waves. And this is the wave you want to be parallel to. You can't be parallel to this wave if you're doing raptors. Right? The timing won't work. The timing won't sync up. So my guess is you show up here. Oh, well, these guys are... I don't know what this Talia is doing, honestly. If the Talia just did the dragon here, you lose dragon on the map, because these guys are so low bad conditions, and if you walk in, your game is fucked. So, I don't know why Talia is playing like this. So, again, like to me, this is just like complete flip, and, and your karma is actually going to lose a wave as well. We've, we've made zero coordinated, like, plays. It's all just random. It's all purely, oh, I see Talia walking into my lane. I'm going to make something happen, right? Not that that's a bad thing, and you're, pun you're, you're punishing, sure. But to me, it seems like nothing is in your control, and it's only on Talia inting. So... It's fine, like, you found you found punishers against Talia, which is fine. I just think the punishers are not realistic either. The punishers you've made are very um, dependent on them being, like, actually stupid. Because, again, okay, so let's, let's say Talia did this thing, and uh, let's just recap. Talia shows up in the bush, she misses all her abilities, what if she just, like, walked this way and then went to go to the dragon? Right, you, you can't do anything here. Look, why, look, look, if you're the Talia here... What is the reason behind walking through, like, walking through like this? There's just, just no reasoning. He, he dodges the hook, he chunks it out a little bit, and he can still leave. They can still leave. Just, just, why are you doing this, man? Like, why? Right? So, this play is just, like, there's no punish to be made here. He just did, like, the best case for your position. Okay. We, we're doing the top side, and we're seeing top fight. So, this is where, okay, so... Bot lane is still a place you want to play towards, but you are level 6, and this guy is, I mean, possibly killable, but what happens if this is warded, this is warded, right? These are either bushes that these warded, it, you can't get anything here, your wave is also slow pushing, so like, let's say, let's say, this guy, and this guy disappear, what's gonna happen to this wave, and I actually might go this way, but Rumble, since Rumble and Garen are here, what's gonna happen is Rumble's gonna push this wave in. Realistically, Garen can stand all the way back here. He doesn't need to be this far up. But because he is this far far up, it's okay to look, but this tribush could be warded. Right, he also has flash. Okay. 
So we expended our ult, a, a lot of our time, for a kill, right? And we used Rumble and Violet. Right? Their, their jungler showed bot lane. He's been bot lane. We're getting Herald. Now we have five camps up. So what I want to see you do here is three camps, recall, play for your mythic. That's what I was thinking of here. Nope. We see a fight and we fucking run to it. Yes. 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 This is going to look good for sure. Oh, we're actually going to kill someone too, possibly. Yes. Yes, Warlord 15-15. Yes. Right? Like, all of this is just like... It's just random. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even sure what's going on. The the way you want to play jungle is not looking at, oh, my teammates are fighting. I need to run and I go help them. No, because if you do this in all of your games, it's going to be completely flipped. So clearing all these camps, recall, right? Yep, get item. Sure. Run through bot lane. Sure, we have, we have item. So this in this in this game, right, this is a concept we didn't talk about. But you have item, your power spike is is, is, is is acquired. Your weak side right here does not need to be touched anymore. The reason why you would want to touch your weak side is to get you to be more powerful than them. Or um, it's just like once you get first item, these basic rules like don't really apply as much. But it's just good fundamentals. So walking through this wave, because you're this is being parallel to the wave. right? You're on top of the wave. If the enemy tries to get this kind of minion, you're here. right? So this, this play could end up being really good. You also want to drop Herald. Sure. So Herald is not gone for a long time, no? 148. So why not play in this bush? Wait for the plates to go down. Wait, maybe play for a dive. Maybe play for anything here. The goal of this prio shouldn't be to drop Herald right now when you have 1 minute and 48 seconds. And the time is 11.13 or 11.31. The goal of this Herald should not be to drop it right now. You want to... You want to get the, the plates lower and then drop it. So what you do is you can walk through this wave. If these guys aren't contesting it, you can leave and go to Crab, go Invade, go with Blitzcrank, control the map first. You're, there's no vision anywhere here. And your Blitzcrank probably has support at them, hopefully, by 11 minutes. Um, so you could just light up their entire jungle. If you want to, go dive their bot lane. But not, like nothing is happening here. It's just so random. I don't know what's going on. We're, we're heralding a five-plate turret when, we have, when we're in no rush at all. There's just no urgency to do this. Okay, clear this word. Sure. If you want to go help mid lane, go like this and queue over the wall. Dodge the vision that way. They'd be more creative than walk all the way around. You're playing Vi. Mid lane dies. Sure. Y you could have been there probably if you queued over the wall. So... Catching the wave. Okay, and then again, fog. Fog, 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 fog. Look. Look at your character when the, the wave was cleared. Your position and you're showing that you're going into the top side. That's very bad. Unless you wanted to trick them, walk top side, and then you walk down. You want to walk... You want to fog in the opposite direction that you're going into. So if I want to play into top side, I'm fogging down and then I'm walking top side. You don't want to let them know where you're going. Like, that gives them a lot of time to think. Also, lingering vision is very important here because vision sometimes is fucked up. Like sometimes it'll show where you are. Weak side into our strong side. That vi that that minion, if either watching, it barely catches you. But this is a good this is a good idea. What I would do is I would wait here, then walk. But it's a good idea to stay off vision. Again. This guy, not our target. This guy, yes. This guy, yes. All right, so it seems like you've identified the conditions very poorly. The, the goal of picking Karma in this draft is so she can move to you. Not so so she brings you to them. Like, no, you don't, you don't go to her at all. You don't go to this Karma. And it's on you to understand that. And if this Karma isn't moving and she's staying mid, you don't go mid. You need to know that that's a bad play. This is a bad thing to do. You have one, two, three camps up. Your bot lane is coming off map. And you're hovering mid here. Doing absolutely nothing. You're not going to get anything from this. You can go check if Crab is up. You can be finishing your Raptors by now. You could be finishing your Raptors and your Krugs. Because of the timing. Look at the timing. 
you want to match your Filios and your Blitzcrank's timer. So by the time they're back in base, you can do this this Raptors. You could possibly do one shot this Crab and still do Krugs and then gank and play bot. You sat here for fucking one minute and did zero. I've been looking at people's games recently, and at every like every other minute, there's just 30, 40 seconds of wasted time. No, stop overcomplicating the damn game. Full clear your camps. Waste all the time you want, then return to this camp at in 118. You even have the blitz, the blitz, uh, the blitz app or whatever. So you know this is coming up. Return to that damn camp after you full clear. Stop wasting your time, right? This game you could have almost been level 11, unironically, if you if you didn't mess up like so much of your clearing sequences. You 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 got good kills here and there because the the enemy was really inting, which is good. Fix your clearing in this game, and you will be able to woman on this game without relying on anyone else. And even if this is a competitive setting, like you said, this is a um, playing as five comms in French or whatever, tell your teammates to fuck off, bro. Like, you're the jungler. You cannot be their little dog. If they're like, yeah, like, please help me or whatever, just say, like, piss off, bro. I don't think it's a good play. I'm not doing that. I mean, Karma, one time in his life, is moving down. If this Blitzcrank is going to land such a good Q, two things. One, go around. This guy's dead. You have ult, you have flash, you have smite, you have all your abilities, you have Sunder. It's going to be a 2v2 here. If you're scared of Talia, fine. The moment Talia shows, leave. Q away. You're fine, right? Go around. This is a kill, right? Number two. Um, Why are you queuing like this? It's it literally slows you down, unless you're trying to Q and then ult in. There's no reason to Q like this. Save your abilities. This is the same thing that ha this other Diamond Hecarim player was doing. He was just throwing his E down at the most random times. Okay, it's not actually random. I understand why you're queuing now because you think the fight's gonna break out within the next three four seconds. It's not. It is not. You need to you, you need to save your ability for when the actual fight breaks out. Even if you don't get a max charge Q, it doesn't matter. You need, you need your ability just in case. Okay, so again. So we could have full cleared one minute ago. But we wasted <laughs> way too much time. We got nothing. So in a game where we're this fed, because, you know, we got kills. We got, a, we got, we got the Herald. We're going to place Herald down. We've accomplished almost nothing. Unfortunately. And none, none of these plays seem very well thought out. Unfortunately. Okay. Do you, you want to type any questions, any thoughts? I'm gonna give. I'm gonna recap this and give my best advice on as to how to view what went wrong. I'm gonna recap the mistakes. But otherwise, ask you questions. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick, and then um. Uh. Well, I'll tell you how to like think about these mistakes and change them, improve on them. I'll be back. Is this Diamond Jungle gameplay? Um, I think this is like Diamond Flex, yeah. Um, but okay, to recap real quick. 
biggest mistakes are you're going around trying to help your teammates when there's no play to be made. There's zero to be made. Um, and it seems like every time you see a team teammate fighting or a, a, a teammate um, dying, you run to it. And you can't play like that, especially not in the jungle role. Go play mid-karma support like your millionaire is doing. Go play Nunu, uh, Poppy. Like, go play some jungler that, like, doesn't need resources. And just go monkey fight with, go monkey fight with your teams. No. That's not what you want to do, right? You want to learn. You want to be better at the game. Focus on playing the game with conditions that make sense with the game. Focus on uh, like actually making good plays. Um, other thing is, um, once you have your power spike, right? It, you need to know where is a good like what is a good thing to play for, and most of the time it's just getting vision, right? Playing in the enemy jungler jungle to pressure, and like sitting and like just pressuring lanes, right? Um, but you have the right idea to hover this lane here. So the other thing is like you need to focus on waves more. Waves, waves, waves are more important than just randomly ganking or showing up or whatever. Um, waves are the most important thing to, to be focused on. Thinking about waves more often will help change uh, some of the mistakes you're making. And then there's just a, like a neat, neat trick is with the fog. Make sure you're playing the fog line well. It looks too random, must be in flavors. No, I mean, the thing about um, hitting a specific rank in general, one game is not a display of someone's actual skill, right? So, like, I can see challenger players play, you know, very, very bad. You can probably see me play very, very bad from some time, from point to point. Um, but, um, it's just, there's, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, I don't think it's fair to say that someone is like not deserved of the rank. But yeah, it's some, uh, yeah, I would say nowadays Elo is kind of fucked up, bro. Gaining 30, 40, or 25 even, and not having to play promos, it's just like, man, what does the world come to? Like, fuck it, man. I'm getting 30 in challenger and I'm losing 15, 16. I don't know. That's actually messed up. Uh, anyway, um, any other game to look at from here? Or does anyone else have a game to look at? Probably do one more and then call it. I'm looking to do like two hours every single class-ish. Um, J4. I mean, if we have no one else, then I'll just look at it. But I'll give someone some time to... If they have a game. So it looks like you smited the Gromp this time? No, you smited the blue buff, which is good. Okay, carding is not, not bad. So here, you're playing Jarvan, you're really low, so... If you want to be proactive on the map, what you would do is you would take a red buff, get the healing from it, and then go be proactive, otherwise you just full clearing. Full clearing is fine. One thing you did here is you hit all the baby minions, you don't hit the baby minions. Um, two Qs and one E will kill everything. Don't hit the baby minions, you wasted a lot of time here. See how you're getting that extra Q anyway? Yeah, you can smite this. Good. Everything looks good. Good, good, clear. Could probably maybe save a little bit of time from the Raptors, and otherwise, it's pretty good. You clear this, recall. Recall, 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 recall. No, 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 no. Um, okay, so this could have been a flash. But, like you saw, Hecarim is here. If you EQ'd like this, after Lissandra used all her abilities, Syndra just saved her abilities as well, you get double killed here. Maybe not double killed, but you you die. If both of these Syndra and the Hecarim are good, what's gonna happen is Syndra saves her abilities, right? She's rooted, so she can still EQ you when you use both abilities. You try and EQ her when she's rooted. She EQs you, she stuns you, Hecarim comes comes by and he runs you guys down. Right? This gank is not good. 
You keep doing this. Two games in a row now. You guys might even lose a flash here. Like, that's... Oh my god. Okay, ni nicely played there. Almost. Almost. See, I'm like, this is just a flip. Like, this gank is like, this is like, either player, either side could have played it better. There's no actual, like, like this guy's full HP. How is this guy ever dead? Like, he would just flash. Like, at, at, at worst, he'll just flash. For him. Flash at full HP, in fact. Anyway, back to our top side, full HP. We have a item. Um, clear, clear, clear. Smited the Gromp. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I would smite the Wolves, because your single target damage is good. After the Raptors, we're moving together. We have Pryo bot. So right here, uh, you probably did it earlier, but you need to check items. I don't know what item MF has. Also, the prio they have is like not real, um, because look at their wave. Their, their wave, like their wave, is slow pushing into us. So the only reason why you would do this is if you want the enemy bot lane to come and lose minions, because they are going to lose minions. Um, and then, then your MF will go back and catch the wave. That's why you would want to do this. But you're not actually gonna, like, let's say the fight goes on for 30 more seconds. This MF's wave is gonna crash and she's gonna lose everything. So let's see if that happens. Oh no, you guys, you guys end up getting getting kills here. This is this is the thing. The Hecarim, Hecarim uses E. He doesn't have E anymore. Where is Kaisa walking to? Why is he doing that? What the fuck is that? Hecarim has no E. EQ is not great here. Save your EQ. Same thing. Same thing with the Vi thing. You just EQ'd for fun. Ended up being a kill. Sure, they inted. Um, one thing about this play is you have position advantage, right? Your whole team is with you and they're split. That's why I don't necessarily mind this, but also there's no reason to do this, no? You can just farm your camps, bro. Like, they're not gonna pull the dragon. You just go farm your Krugs. Just go sit on top of your Krugs. Um, they do have Pryo though, so sure, you can go ahead and pull it. Um, I, I would probably do this in game two if I were you, but my I just don't know what my MF's conditions are. I don't know if she has if she's back there. I don't think she has. Well, yeah, she hasn't. So she, all she has is like, oh, she's back once. All she has is like a tear and longsword. No, yeah, she's pretty weak. So I, I would I would say like they they could have played that fight better. I think okay. I I called the the dragon because I knew Ikerim started butt, and I believed he would be on Raptors at the same time as me, and I had kind of Bryo butt lane. But you say it's. You're you're right. It's kind of fake, but I think I thought I thought we could have got Drake. Yeah. So right there. so so if if they check with any ability with war or whatever, and you're not ready to punish on when they check, so Kaisa can check it from range. Hecarim can just leave the Raptors and move, right? So that's the thing. Like this dragon, dragons take a long time unless you're playing like Vi. Uh, I mean, Dragon is an okay amount, but dragons in general take a long time to do. So if you're playing like for example, like three OP champions to clear Dragon, Vi, Renata, and Kaisa. Like, all those champions, like, fucking one-shot Dragon. You could probably do it in, like, 15 seconds or less. Um, then maybe this will work, but um, you could also just pull the Dragon after Raptors, and you'll be in a better position, I feel like. Lissandra will be level 6, your bot lane can play for the wave, you can time the crash better, it'll be looking a little bit better. That's the thing, you don't need to force it right away, you can always do it later. MF, and Karma can hit this plant, and it'll be like, that's their move, that's good, that's good enough, they get information on everyone, that's really good. They get this ward there, they hit the plant. Cool, so then here, this guy is doing this, you want this fight fight, nice. Okay, you see the set, this is good, so the moment you see set, you ult, this is really good, good fighting here. You're waiting in the ult, so right here, you see Lissandra's low conditions, he's probably telling you. But the, the, you don't want to fight here, that's fine. You're also playing with Orn, you just ult it. So you don't want to interact with this. You want to full clear down. Keep clearing. And interact with Balin. Interact with this dragon again. I would even do red buff here. Yep, good. Or... I, yeah, your, your Balin has full prio. Yeah, your, your mid's crashing too. This is this is a good pull. I would just be, I would be looking at the lanes earlier. And seeing if they're going to get prior earlier. Because you wasted a lot of time. You, you should have already been pulling the objective at this point. I, I missed it. But this guy's... I don't know where their midliner is. I think he recalled. He's getting full prior already. And then your ballian's actually winning the wave. So you're not you're not looking at either wave here. That's I can't... I, I don't know what's going on. You obviously don't know. Like, especially if you're not looking. 
So you need to look at what's going on with mid wave and with bot wave, because that's what prio means. If they have the wave crash, then you have the first set up in the river. The enemy has to catch a wave. Right? And the main thing is you guys are grouped as four in this position. So you should have you should have finished this dragon thirty uh, not thirty seconds like like five five to ten seconds faster. It would have already been dead by here by now. So there might there might not have even been a fight. Okay, there isn't a fight anyway. Uh, I would go back to my camps. Yes, I wouldn't. Oh shit. Okay, that's some Jarvan A plus stuff. Um. Yeah. So like, make sure you make sure you're getting your combos right on champions, and just like don't use your abilities if, if you're gonna mess it up. On on honestly, that's something I learned. Like, I missed a lot of my least in Qs in my days. I just stopped using Q, and I just like waited for someone to land CC. Recall here okay. is. Um, Question. Yeah. What's for up? A sec. Yeah. Um. Should he have done Krugs first before the red to pair the timers? Um. It's been too long since Raptors anyway. Um, okay. Yeah. But yes, 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 because um, actually it depends, right? Because it also takes a little bit of extra time to co go here. I wouldn't overcomplicate it too much. But let's say okay. he EQ'd or he spent like Kinder or something, and he, he you can like Q over the wall and then Q over the wall again. Then yeah, you you can. But it's it's gonna take a while because like look, he doesn't have E or Q right here, or maybe he does. Um, he does. He will. Yeah. So you you could do that. You could do that. That's a that's a good thing to point out. I don't really worry about it too much though. So if I were you, I wouldn't try actively thinking about it. One thing you do you want you do want to do here is when you're so close to item, you want to get your item on your recall. I would literally walk through the bot and take their wave. I don't care. I'm getting my I'm getting my item. Alternatively, you have ultimate as well. You're not you're not weak. You don't even need to recall. You're you're not weak. So the only reason why I would want to recall is if I'm playing for Herald, or if I'm playing for my response. But the only reason why I would play for Herald or my response is if my balling is not doing good. The, your balling is doing good. The reason why you always want to do your weak side as fast as you can is so you can get stronger. But in this game, you are strong already. Um, you're level 7, almost level 8. Your bot lane is hard winning. So I'd want to either play for this bot wave to dive or something pro more proactive here so I can get my gold trigger. And the, the goal is not to like flip a play. The goal is I literally just need 100 gold. So even if I stay on the map and apply pressure, like I'm getting my item faster. But Because now you'll need to recall right after. So, for example, this Hecarim is doing this shit topside, and while you were diving bot lane, it's pretty pretty easy dive, right? Because Hecarim's topside. Okay, clearing these camps. We have no alt. Nice steal. If you had Gordrick here, it'd be so fucking good. Sag. Um, if you're aware you have bigger smite or something, maybe that's why you're doing it. No, he has, he has equal smite. I mean, the thing about this kind of play, it is, it is just a flip. So, if you really want to make this happen, I, it's fine, I guess. But additionally, like, you could just, like, imagine you die and you don't get the smite. It, it's pretty bad. If you just clear this, clear this, you could probably get his gromp as well. And then you're you're going to be in a good, a good position. So, this is where I'm talking about, like, you're, you're, you, you're doing too much. You don't need to do this. Um, this is how you actually lose games. This is a, what I would call like a pretty big mistake, um, if anything. You don't see higher yellow players, challenger players, especially do shit like this unless they're literally unless this is like their playstyle. Unless like winning flips is their playstyle, it's a, it's a weird thing. But people people take a lot. If people normally don't do this unless they just in general take a lot of flips. Um, I would just clear my camps here. Maybe invade one one or two of his camps, and then um, go. You know, re restart the map. Re restart whatever I can. Recall, get War Drinker. So we have item. We're strong now. We want to play towards bot lane. Okay, so here is a thing where, again, strong side camp. So we don't need to clear either of these, right? You have your War Drinker, right? Your top camps don't really matter. They're desynced as well, right? These pings should not exist. Looks like a smiley face now. But these things should not exist because you should be here. You have item. You want vision of their jungler. Your laners are playing with prio. This is not the time to farm. The only reason why I would farm is if this prio meant that, like, didn't mean much. Like, let's say that your, your, your teammates don't have ult. 
or they're they're like really weak and you're really weak that's the only reason why i wouldn't be here let's say the enemy jungler has their mythic you don't have your mythic your mid does and your bot does and they're playing like this it doesn't matter if i'm weak my laners are strong that's how i'm going to win the fight so you should be here or uh realistically not you don't need to be there but you, you, you need to get information you need to go and get intel on what the jungler is doing and make a play with your laners. This whole time, you should have been walking with your mid laner down to bot lane and diving these guys with heralding. And if Hecarim is on camps, if Hecarim is back here, you're jumping on him first with the Sandra ult. Good, we make it happen anyway. But it could have been done way cleaner. You ha you missed the t you missed the. Uh, the, the timer on the map, right, and again, same thing, do the crab recall, keep hovering like this, you need to go to your top side ASAP, if it just walks away, there's going to be nothing, if that guy was walking forward, then I would start moving, okay, so he got your whole top side, right, so I, I honestly, if I, if I were thinking, about um, like what what would what would happen while I'm in the bot side? What I would do is I would do this crab, um, recall depending on where my MF goes, match where MF is, but play for his bot side, cause I shouldn't like I your top side is gone. Play for bot side, play for dragon. Uh, unless you're playing for plates, but you got one dragon earlier, so dragon's better. So I I wouldn't even be in the top side here. I would already be on their blue buff and on their grump. And this guy like would have face checked me and I probably would have killed him. And this is obviously irrelevant. Doesn't matter. You're doing dragon. This is good. You, you take his boss side. Good. So overall, this feels a, a bit better. Uh, there's, not much, there's not as much chaos. Like, there's not as much randomness going on. So it already is feeling better for me to just watch. I can understand a little bit more of your thought process. I understand why you're doing these things, and it just feels better. You got TP'd on, so that's why they want to do this. So one thing about this invade is you don't have any, you don't have anyone with you. Two things: your laner is catching the cannon wave right here, and your your bot lane is catching the cannon wave here. Just wait, pull this down so Hecarim can't do it, and wait here patiently. This camp is not going anywhere. He's not gonna run away from you. You'll you'll be able to clear it soon. So, just wait, and you'll have opportunity to clear this camp. You need to match your timer with your winning lanes of Pryo, otherwise you're playing not League of Legends, or you're I don't know. This is, I don't know, I don't know how to say. It. You're, you're just you're playing suboptimal. Alright, any. Questions, because that's pretty much, that kind of wraps wraps up the early game. And I don't really want to talk about the mid game. So my voice is getting tired. <laughs> Alright, if anyone else has any other questions, write in the chat, you can unmute, whatever. Otherwise, um, I'm probably just going to call it here.